Senator Dave Senjum carries the Senate Capital Investment Bill. He's here now to discuss it. Senator, thanks for joining us. Good to be here, Julie. Senator, before we actually start talking about the projects and the dollars, you brought up in committee that there are a couple of unique components to this year's package. What are those? Yes, uh, this year, Julie, we put a couple of things in the bonding bill uh, to have some discussion, hopefully uh, maybe be even acted as we go forward uh, through the conference committee. One. One relates to you know jobs and job creation. Okay, we, we always have bonding bills uh, seemingly, and we always say they're great job producers. And, and I'm not gonna suggest that uh, they don't produce jobs. But the, uh, the language within this year's bill says, okay, let's start tracking jobs. Let's have reports back how many jobs were produced, uh, you know, a little bit about salary and things like that. So we have some better idea as to what frankly, quantifiably, uh, is the job creation uh, ability of a bonding bill. So we'll hopefully get that put together and, uh, and uh, going forward, we'll have some better idea of the, the value of, of bonding to job production. The other one has to do, and it's somewhat unique, we have, we have within the bonding bill other examples right now. For instance, uh, uh, having to do with uh, sewer and water projects, we don't fund the sewer and water project, for instance, specifically for a small town. We put them in what we call the uh, Public Finance Authority has a fund. And we will fund that fund, and the Public uh, Finance Authority then, or Public Facilities Authority, then will decide on whether or not it's uh, Bawabic or whether or not it's Walnut Grove in terms of, of needing assistance from the state, and we'll base that on need and, and other features. So uh, what we suggest is we're gonna take all the local bonding projects, put them into a like fund, deed would administrate it, and they will then, based on some criteria, attempt to adjudge which project is meritorious over other projects and take kind of the politics, if you will, out of the bonding bill. Well, let's talk a little bit about the actual bill. It totals $496 million. Mm -hmm. What do you like best? Oh, uh, be honest with you, uh, I think uh, the lead project in the bill has to do with the uh, expansion of the Cancer Research Center at the Hormel Institute may surprise people, but it's a magnificent organization that does wonderful work. Uh, they're going to double their facility over there. The Hormel Foundation is going to take care of paying half of that uh, or the other half, and it's a magnificent project. And I think as we traveled around the state of Minnesota, I think that really was the, the, the highlight project of all that we looked at. Given that the projects, <clears throat> excuse me, given the projects that made it into the bill and those that were excluded, such as the St. Paul Saints Ballpark, Minority Leader Tom Bach stated in a news release this week that, quote, the bonding bill should not have a partisan tone of bringing home the bacon. The focus should be on making investments that leave a better Minnesota for future generations. In your opinion, does your bill have a partisan tone to well, it? Well, for goodness sakes, don't. Uh, uh, not. Uh, that is not the case at all. It, uh, tell you what, we, you know, put the bill together, looking at both sides, it, it, it it, it's got to have a bipartisan approach because it takes 41 votes to, to pass. So uh, in, in that sense, you have to reach out and involve your, your in our case, DFL colleagues. We certainly did that. Uh, it's not at all a partisan bill. I will assure anybody uh, uh, that that is uh, not the case. It's a bipartisan bill and it was crafted in that fashion and worked with. Uh, uh, the minority caucus to, to put it together. Well, somebody who is obviously disappointed is Senator Sandy Pappas. She does join us later in the program, and she's disappointed again that the St. Paul Saints ballpark is excluded from the bill and the Minsky or the U of M appropriations as well. Is there wiggle room in these areas for you as this uh, as this bill goes through the process through conference committee? Well, there, there, there more than likely will be, uh, although it, it might wiggle down instead of up, uh, uh, honestly, because uh, it, uh, it's a matter that the House has a uh, $280 million bill. This is a $496 million bill, and uh, there will be wiggle room. But, uh, you know, to make all these projects work within the framework of whatever that final number is, is going to be difficult. Uh, uh, and I would just say, you know, from the standpoint of the St. Saint Paul Saints, uh, they have been magnificent in terms of advocating for their project. It's been around for two years. We've had projects on the list that have been here for five or six years. Uh, to some extent, there is a, a kind of a wait your time phenomenon that goes on here, and, uh, and that's just the way it has to be. There's so much available money, and we've got to look at each of them and try to craft this bill as well as we can, understanding that... Uh, uh, there is a, a wait in line phenomena that we have. And the Senate bill from a dollar amount standpoint comes in virtually in the middle of what the governor yeah. proposes and what the House proposes. So let's begin with the House as you go into conference committee. When you go into conference sure. committee, would you go as low as 300 million? I, uh, 
we will, I, I will doubt that we would probably want to go that low. Uh, I, I, I think we have to be able to, you know, pass the bill. That's the secret. You have to, you have to make it low enough to, to certainly uh, appeal to one side and certainly high enough to appeal to the other side. And you look for, if you will, the sweet spot. And uh, we believed, at least in, in, on the Senate side, that the sweet spot was about, you know, uh, just short of $500 million. And, uh, and that matches up, by the way, to a $497 million bill that was uh, put into place last July of 2011. Uh, and making then the total bill uh, uh, a little less than a billion dollars, which is somewhat typical of a bonding biennium for the state of Minnesota. You've been quoted saying this is the right bill at the right time, but given the low interest rates at this time, is there room for you to go up closer to the governor's number? Well, you have to just acknowledge that you know bonding is not free. It, uh, there is a debt service associated with it, and you have to recognize that. and. And so uh, by no means are uh, we out of the woods on a budgetary basis at this point. Uh, the bonding bill was based on a forecast which said we could, we could spend under the forecast up to $775 million, uh, as the governor did. Uh, we're a little under that, uh, but I think we feeling, we're feeling, at least on our side, that, that we ought to be under it, that we, that we shouldn't reach for the stars necessarily, that we ought to be somewhat reserved and looking towards the future and, and possible deficits. Senator, are you proud of the bill as it stands? I'm, I'm happy, you know, you're never proud of anything. Well, maybe you are, I, I don't know, but, uh, but what you do is try to, again, find a, put together a bill that uh, will generally, uh, speaking, uh, get support on, on both sides and it will pass. I think it's important for a bonding bill to pass this year. And that was the objective and as we fine tuned this thing, uh, looking at, uh, all the needs of Minnesota, I, I, will, I will say a lot of higher education needs, a lot of uh, uh, wastewater infrastructure needs, certainly a lot of flood control needs, uh, uh, a lot of uh, roads and bridges needs. There's a, there's a fundamentally, an, you know, it's, it's a basic bill, uh, essentially. Uh, so as you look at those fundamental needs that we have, I think it's well put together and hopefully we'll get good support. Did you present a bill that will get the we, votes? Pardon me? Did you present a bill that you expect to oh, get the, uh, the votes? Well, uh, I do have uh, Senator Langston on the other side that uh, has, has moved the bill in two committees now so and has signed on to the bill. So that's always a good sign that the ranking uh, Democrat in this case is, uh, is okay with it, uh, given the fact that he has uh, dissenters within his own caucus that uh, are not necessarily in love with this bill. He nonetheless, I think, recognizes it's a, it's a good middle ground and we can work with it. Okay, Mr. Chair of the Capital Investment Committee and Majority Leader Dave Sengem, thank you for joining us today. We certainly appreciate it. Julie, thank you so much.